Hi, this is Mitsaka here uh, with a very nice thing today uh, that I want to show you. Because I wrote a little Python script that lets you export terrain height maps from a Blender mesh directly to Unity. Um, if you have ever used the Unity uh, terrain system before, you know possibly that, um, like, let's open one here, that you can um, <coughs> actually import height maps over here. But Unity only supports this raw type, which is um, quite difficult to get, especially with the uh, kind of resolution that we want. Because we want 16-bit uh, height maps, not 8-bit ones. Um, so um, in the first part, I will show you how to use the uh, little Python script and the corresponding blend file that I made. Um, you can get those on, on the GitHub. And in the second part, I will show you how to tweak it to your needs. So <clears throat> let's just um, open this blend file. So this is the blend file you can get from GitHub. Um, then you can select the terrain mesh, which is a plane that is on top of here. And it already has a multi-resolution modifier uh, added to it. So you can uh, go right into it and start sculpting. So for example, let's add some mountains here. And you know you have the entire tool set of um, Blender sculpting to your hand. So let's use the grab tool for instance. You know, all of that works. Um, and you can also add some meshes that you want to have in the uh, final terrain. So these will also be baked as height map. Um, be aware that like everything that is uh, below something won't show up. So it is always a flat plane that is just pretty much extruded uh, to the top or moved. So yeah, you can't do something like this in there, but we will have a look at it. So, uh, and when you're done uh, modeling your stuff, you just hit this little run script button. And you wait uh, a couple of seconds because Blender will freeze during that time. And I can't avoid uh, that from happening. And it will possibly run a bit faster for you because I'm running this on a quite old machine. Also, I'm recording. Um, but in general, it should be pretty fast. Also, I said we're rendering to CPU. Um, you can set it to GPU theoretically, but I had some bugs with it. But just try it out. Um, yeah, now we can go to Unity. Select our terrain, go to the inspector, the little gear settings tab. And you can go to import raw. Then we go to the um, file path that our uh, Blender file is in. And we have a heightmap.raw. You can open that. By default, this is set to 1025 by 1025. 16 bit is fine, Windows is fine. Terrain size, that's your choice. But the height is half of the width in my case. So if you don't tweak it, you need to keep this or like get a thousand, five hundred, a thousand, or you know, probably get it. Now it didn't render correctly. That is, I think, because we were in the sculpt mode. So let's actually try to go out of it. Let's save the blend file. Uh, run the script again. And that seems like an issue. <laughs> I didn't know that, so... <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it seems like you need to go out of the scope mode so that the multiverse modifier can apply the changes. So let's wait, 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 wait. But this is still faster than like opening GIMP or Photoshop and doing it all by hand. So let's open this. That's 1025 by 1025. Import. And there we go. It's finished. It's important. And yeah, it's pretty nice. And here you can see that like uh, the hole which uh, beneath the mouth here, it got filled in. That can't be avoided. So create your meshes accordingly. And that's it. Like it's super easy to use. Just hit one button and sculpt in this box. Like if you go out of the, this bounding box that I have here, um, 
it won't render it higher or lower. That's also why the terrain is slightly higher when we ground. So, like if you if you still want to add some rivers or something, I added a small uh, extra space there for you. Well, so that is how you can use it, and if that's the only thing I want to do, perfect. Go ahead, have fun. Um, here is how it works internally, so you can uh, tweak it a little bit. So what this Blender file does, it essentially renders uh, the mist pass uh, in cycles. So let's go to the our scene tab here. If you go to passes, you can see that the mist pass enable is enabled. The mist pass is pretty much like the Z pass, uh, but it has anti-aliasing added to it, so it's a bit nicer. Um, in the world settings, you can set the uh, settings for your mist pass. So in this case, it starts at distance 20. So that is exactly the distance from the camera point to the uh, clipping plane of the camera. So it, it starts right at the beginning here and then it goes 10 down. And then, uh, yeah, it captures this area perfectly and it is set to linear so that we don't get um, distortions through the quadratic. Um, scheme. So then we have in the compositor we have this little thing. Um, the scene internally simply renders with a plain material. I set the like if you go to the scene tab in material there's the fast render material which is why if I go to render view mode here. Oh no it doesn't do that. Okay but um, if we were to render it, so this is our render result, let's render it. Um, everything simply renders publish, which is supposed to show you that it's uh, processing the data right now. Like you can put a different material, but this is just a plain emission material, which is the fastest one to render, I guess. And then it goes into the Compositor, which just drags out the mist, inverts it, and pumps it into the composite and the viewer node. And the Python script actually, let's let's look into it. The Python script actually gets uh, the information from the viewer node. So if you have something else in the viewer node, where is it? Uh, over here, yeah. If you have something else in the viewer node, it won't work. So uh, this is really only for exporting. You can't really render in this scene because I'm really, uh, using all the render stuff for exporting. And then it uh, pretty much creates a byte buffer and um, writes the file. It's, it's pretty straightforward. You don't need to know all this stuff. What might be important is you can set a file path up here Right now it is set to the folder we have and it says hidemap.raw. You can of course change the file name or you can also set a um, full path. So if you remove this hashtag, is it? I, I don't know if, if there's a better word in English for hashtag. Uh, the hashtag here, you can actually uh, like switch between these. And that's it. It, it really is that simple. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, write a comment below the YouTube video or send me a note on Twitter or contact me on pretty much any other platform. Um, and I will try to help you out. Or if you have suggestions how to improve the system, also get in contact. And that's it. Um, I hope you find this very useful. Um, if you do, uh, I wouldn't mind you spreading this. So like maybe you know another Unity dev who is working with terrain systems and would find this very useful because I definitely think it is very useful because the Unity terrain system right now sucks. I think they are going to change it a lot soon, but until then, it's nice to have a uh, yeah, better sculpting tool. And that is Blender.
right. Okay. Um, thank you for watching. Get in contact. Uh, and see you next time. Bye.